They say one man's trash is another man's treasure, and in this case, that saying couldn't be more true. Industries around the world have learned how to turn piles of discarded wood waste into sleek, durable particle boards that shape the furniture we use every single day. From kitchen cabinets to office desks, what once was scrap now defines modern living spaces. Now let's take a closer look at how 16 million tons of wood waste are transformed into particle boards every year. The Recycling Revolution The wood-based industry is constantly searching for sustainable and stable sources of raw material. To meet demand, researchers and manufacturers are exploring alternatives such as recycled wood, an option that's cheaper, more abundant, and helps reduce dependence on natural forests. Statistically speaking, the world produces more than 108 million cubic meters of particle board every year, after recycling about 16 million tons of wood waste in the process. That number alone represents one of the largest recycling efforts on Earth, quietly turning what was once considered trash into a material that holds together our homes, schools, and workplaces. See, most of this waste would have ended up rotting in landfills or burnt down, which releases carbon back into the atmosphere. But instead of contributing to more global warming, this waste is given a new life as part of something useful and lasting. Today, particle boards have become the backbone of modern furniture design and home construction. It's in the tables we eat from, the cabinets in our kitchens, the shelves that hold our belongings and the panels that shape entire rooms. So how does particle board move from waste wood to a fine looking finished product? Waste collection. It all begins in the raw material yard, a massive open space filled with mountains of wood waste reaching several meters high. Here, the foundation for every sheet of particle board arrives in a constant stream carried by trucks loaded with sawmill offcuts, slab wood, thin strips, furniture scraps, broken pallets, and discarded packaging. Basically, anything made of wood. Nothing here looks glamorous or valuable at first glance, but every pile represents potential, waiting to be transformed into something useful. In this process, high-quality commercial timber is almost never used because the true philosophy of particle board manufacturing is about giving low-grade wood and byproducts a second life. According to data from Mordor Intelligence, the majority of the feedstock comes from wood residues such as chips, shavings, and sawdust generated by sawmills and furniture factories. These materials are light, abundant, and already partially processed, making them ideal for recycling on an industrial scale. As this mixed stream of material enters the plant, it goes through a strict cleaning and inspection process. Powerful electromagnetic separators remove any metallic particles like nails, staples, or bits of metal that might have come from old furniture or pallets, preventing serious damage to the shredding machines ahead. Next, screening systems filter out sand, stones, and mineral debris that could dull the blades or weaken the final product. If whole logs are occasionally used, they must pass through debarking drums, since bark contains too much dirt and resin that would interfere with bonding and surface quality. This recycling-based approach is not only resource efficient, but also environmentally significant. Chipping and flaking. From the raw material yard, the cleaned wood begins its journey on a long conveyor belt stretching hundreds of feet, feeding directly into a machine that looks like something out of a steel giant's workshop. This is the chipper, a massive industrial beast about the size of a small room, where thick slabs of waste wood disappear into its opening. Inside, a huge spinning disc fitted with razor-sharp knives rotates thousands of times per minute, slicing through each piece of wood with precision and power. The result is a steady stream of uniform wood chips, each only a few inches long, transformed from rough offcuts into something far more manageable. But these chips are only the beginning. They move next into specialized flakers or mills, machines designed to refine the chips even further. Here, the real particles that give particle board its name are born. The process involves grinding the larger chips into small, consistent flakes, each one shaped in size depending on its role in the board's structure. For the outer face layers, the machines shave the material into thin, flat flakes only a few hundredths of an inch thick. These flakes are engineered for smoothness and precision, ensuring the final board surface will look clean, even and ready for finishing. For the inner core layer, the flakes are left thicker and more irregular, 
forming a dense frame that gives the board its strength, rigidity, and that to hold screws and fasteners securely. This careful layering forms what manufacturers call the three-layer sandwich. The outer layers are fine and sleek, while the middle one is coarse and strong, creating a balance between surface beauty and internal durability. To make sure these layers bond perfectly later, the flakes must be dried to a critical moisture level between 2 and 6%. Drying happens in huge rotating drum dryers where hot air flows through continuously. If the flakes are too dry, the resin won't bond evenly, and if too wet, trapped steam can cause the board to rupture from within during pressing. Once dried, the flakes pass through air separators or vibrating screens that sort them by size and weight. The fine material is set aside for the outer layers, while the heavier flakes are directed to the core stream. By this stage, what began as discarded wood waste has already become a carefully engineered material, refined and sorted with scientific precision, ready for the next step. Resin, matte formation, and hot pressing. Here, chemistry meets engineering. Synthetic resin is introduced, acting as the binder that holds millions of the shredded wood particles together. The most common types of resin are urea formaldehyde and melamine urea formaldehyde, chosen for their strong bonding properties, fast curing, and affordability on an industrial scale. This resin is added carefully, usually making up between 6 and 10% of the dry chip mass, a small but vital fraction that decides the board's strength and stability. In continuous mixers, the flakes move through chambers where nozzles spray a fine resin mist, coating every particle evenly. The process is precisely controlled, ensuring each flake receives just the right amount of adhesive. Alongside the resin, small quantities of additives may be introduced, such as hardeners, wax for moisture resistance, and anti-swelling agents. The result is a sticky, uniform mass of wood particles, perfectly prepared to form the heart of a particle board. From here, the material travels to a massive forming machine where the real architecture of the board takes shape. This is where layers are built one after another, creating a carefully structured sandwich. The bottom layer comes first, made of the finest fraction of chips to form a smooth base. Then comes the thick middle layer, composed of large, strong flakes that provide rigidity and mechanical strength. Finally, the top layer is applied using the same fine material as the bottom, giving the future board its flat, smooth outer face. The forming process is a balance between precision and speed, ensuring every layer is evenly distributed across the conveyor belt. Before pressing, the loose mat is passed through a pre-press system. Here, rollers compress it gently, removing trapped air and giving it a compact, manageable shape for the next stage. Then comes the most powerful moment of the process, the hot press. In this enormous press, Temperatures rise to around 400 degrees Fahrenheit, while pressure builds up to tens of kilograms per square centimeter. Under this intense heat and force, the resin undergoes polymerization, where it hardens into a permanent rock-solid bond. In just a few minutes, the loose, fragile mat is transformed into a dense, monolithic board with incredible structural integrity. Once out of the press, the new boards must cool slowly to relieve internal stresses caused by the heat. They move through fan or stair coolers, where air flows continuously over their surfaces until the temperature stabilizes. After cooling, the boards are trimmed, cut into standard sizes, and sanded to precise thickness. Here, calibration machines ensure the surface is perfectly even, ready for lamination or direct use, and then every finished board faces rigorous quality control. Technicians measure density, bending strength, moisture content, surface texture, and dimensional accuracy to ensure each one meets strict industrial standards. Only boards that pass all tests are certified and sent for packaging. Today, more manufacturers are adopting environmentally friendly production standards using certified raw materials and low emission resins. Roughly one quarter of global particle board production already meets recognized environmental certifications such as FSC, or PEFC. This shows a growing commitment to sustainability, ensuring that what began as wood waste now represents not just recycling, but responsible industrial progress. Applications, scale, and sustainability impact. Today, particle boards have become one of the most widely used engineered wood products in the world, shaping everything from modern furniture to large-scale construction. 
According to data published in MDPI, around 66% of all particle board produced globally goes into furniture manufacturing. It forms the core of cabinets, tables, and shelving units, valued for its affordability, flatness, and smooth finish that takes laminates and veneers easily. Another 27% is used in the construction sector, mainly for interior applications like wall panels, subfloors, and partition systems, where its stability and uniformity make it ideal for fast installation and consistent performance. As a result of this constant demand, global production has expanded steadily, reaching an estimated 116.6 million cubic meters in 2023. Yet behind this massive volume lies a crucial environmental role. Since each year, millions of tons of wood waste, ranging from sawmill byproducts to discarded furniture, is diverted into the particle board industry. This process keeps enormous quantities of waste out of landfills and prevents the open burning of wood residues, which can release large amounts of carbon and particulate matter into the atmosphere. By transforming what was once waste into useful material, the industry reduces pressure on natural forests and minimizes the demand for fresh timber. A 2009 PubMed study found that recycling wood waste for particle board production can deliver greenhouse gas savings between 1.3 and 1.9 tons of CO2 equivalent per ton compared to using virgin wood and fossil fuels. This makes particle board manufacturing one of the most efficient examples of circular economy in the wood sector. Additionally, many of these industries now rely on certified sustainable raw materials and are experimenting with agricultural residues like rice, husks, and wheat straw as future feedstocks. What could be better for climate change than this?